and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts and I'm one of the founders of our publication. And joining me today on the 20th of December 2021 from Adelaide is Mr. Adrian Smith, who's the CEO of uh, KTIG, ASX KTG. Adrian, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Stuart, and uh, thanks for having a chat. It, it's a pleasure. So, Adrian, um, uh, it's, it's not too uh, much of an exaggeration to say that KTIG is the next big thing in welding technology in a generation. Uh, we're talking a truly disruptive technology that's that's a hundred times better than than the uh, the standard um, TIG weld that uh, that all my welding friends uh, know all about. You're about to revolutionise an industry that no one thought was revolutionisable. Well, it's certainly the welding industry is a very conservative industry, and most of the technology is, as you've said, 50, 60, 100 years old, depending on the thing. Um, you know, we're, we're a, a proudly Australian um, innovation. It was actually developed some 10 years ago by um, CSIRO, um, who did the original um, science uh, of working of taking the TIG welding process. So it's a standard TIG welding process in terms of the, the codes and, and the standards that are required, but actually producing a highly focused energy density in, in the arc and we're able to do keyhole welding. And what that essentially means is we can weld thick pieces of steel um, in a single pass. So we actually produce a molten slug of metal. You butt up two pieces of, of weld together without any preparation. We run the torch across them and we actually weld a full penetration all the way through. And that's where the productivity comes. To do a, say, a 12 millimeter thick piece of um, stainless steel, um, you might have to do eight or nine passes of a normal TIG weld where you would go in there, you would lay down a, you would at first of all, you would cut a big V in it so you got access to your torch. You would lay a, a one and a half, two millimeter bead down, then you would clean it, you know, remove all the contaminants, and then lay another one down on top of it and another one alongside it, and gradually fill up that um, V preparation gap with um, filler material. And um, you would do that over, you know, perhaps hours, whereas we would do it with a single pass. So our benchmark, our standard schedule 40 pipe, um, which a, a highly experienced TIG welder can weld in a couple of hours, um, we can do in three minutes. Right. So we're talking uh, orders of magnitude of worth of improvement. Now, this is taking me back a little bit, but there was a time when we had such serious labour shortages in Australia that we were bringing skilled welders from Korea uh, to work in the in in Australia, uh, if if KTIG had been available in those days, possibly we could have made the uh, the, the the well as we already had uh, more much more productive than than they were at that time. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and indeed, prior to COVID, we were still doing that in Australia and and in the world. In America, they bring them up from Latin America. In Western Europe, they bring them in from Eastern Europe. Um, uh, you know, it, it is a pretty well established part of the thing. But you've still got a manual welding process. You've still got a welder. Um, uh, whereas as a highly automated robotic system. So you put the, the torch onto a, some form of manipulator that moves the torch in a computer controlled manner. And we lay down a very high quality world. Um, you know, it's, we, one of our big customers is the nuclear sector for welding for the, for the nuclear industry, which is the highest standards possible. And we're able to do that time after again, repeatable and uh, with a low skilled operator. So. You know, one of the interesting things about COVID with all the welders that were being brought in from Southeast Asia into Australia, they don't come anymore. They're not allowed through the borders. And um, that's actually driven a lot of the demand. And we're seeing that globally. Right. And to that end, the last uh, few quarters have been good for, for KTIG. Um, uh, in, the, in the September 2021 quarter, we, we recorded our first million dollar quarter. Um, so uh, it's fair to say uh, that, that uh, uh, business is brisk at KTIG right now. Yeah, we're really pleased. So we've we've done um, six consecutive quarters of between uh, you know the thirty to forty percent um, compound quarter on quarter growth. So you know we're on a good trajectory. Um, we believe that's uh, due to a lot of hard work from from our people and our partners, and uh, uh, we see a very bright future. Right now, no surprise that KTIG is based in Adelaide. Uh, a, a center of excellence for the Australian defense industry. Um, uh, and, and obviously defense players are an important part of, of uh, the potential customer base for KTIG. 
you had a very interesting announcement in October uh, where uh, you, you were working with Hanwha, the, the big uh, Korean chaebol, who was a player in the uh, South Korean defense industry. And you had some very good news in terms of the ease with which Kating could make uh, welding of armored steel uh, easy. Yeah, we've been working with Hanwha for, for quite some time. Um, welding armored steel is, is one of the most complex problems that there, there is, certainly. And, um, you know, basically, uh, steel uh, for, for things like armored vehicles um, is in two categories. There is the ultra high hardness, which basically gives you ballistic protection right. um, from incoming. And then there is the ultra hard toughness, um, which gives you the flexibility to be able to move. And um, armored vehicles are very, very complex structures um, while the blending of ultra high hardness and ultra high toughness, uh, because hardness um, and toughness are sort of like two edges of the, of the pendulum. So right. if you make something very hard, it's, it, you compromise on toughness and vice versa. Right. Um, but we, we, were, we were tasked by Hamla, could we weld um, ultra high hardness steel to ultra high toughness steel? And everybody in the industry says, no, you can't do that. Um, and uh, we, we took that challenge on. Uh, we put our research people, we have in our team, um, you know, uh, highly skilled tradespeople, but we also have PhDs in welding physics. Um, in our team and they went to work on it and uh, we announced some, some pretty pleasing results. Obviously for defense security reasons, I can't give numbers and things like that, but um, it's suffice to say, um, we were no longer the weak point in the joint um, where the world is traditionally always the weak point. Certainly. Now you, you flagged earlier in the conversation that uh, the nuclear industry is gonna be important for you. Um, uh, obviously containers for nuclear waste uh, need to be foolproof for, for, uh, in order to uh, you know, keep the public safe. Um, you're hoping to be the new industry standing, standard in welding for an industry that's not going away in the 21st century is probably gonna become more important uh, in terms of, of decarbonizing our, our, uh, our economy. Uh, talk to us about the strategy that you're pursuing in order to, to, to get involved in that industry. Sure, um, so our, our technology has been used in the UK uh, for some time for producing um, the waste uh, containers. Uh, specifically, there's a, there's a wide range of containers, but the, the big volume one is um, a three cubic meter um, stainless steel concrete line box um, that is used for the decommissioning of the Sellafield facility and is being proposed for the uh, future. These boxes are circa 100,000 pounds each and they're looking at something around 70,000 of them. So it's a multi-billion dollar, dollar contract. Right. Our technology um, is being used to manufacture the, the first initial units now. And we've just entered into an agreement with Sheffield University in the Nuclear Advanced Manufacturing Research Center to develop the next generation of fully automated and robotic welding. So our torch technology is used, but um, in pretty conventional um, manipulator or automation, collar and boom. Uh, we're making that a fully robotic solution and that's envisaged as part of their um, factory of the future concept to be the standard for producing these boxes. So we're working very closely with the industry. Our goals and our aims are not only to, to be the source of the technology, but also to be a participant in the fabrication industry. So we actually wanna make boxes as one of the supply chains and we've been having discussions along those lines where we not only are the OEM of the technology, um, but we will actually be a fabricator producing it. So attaching ourselves to those multi-billion dollar revenues um, and being able to offer the customer basically um, continuous improvement in the technology over the, as you said, it's a long here for a long time. We're talking 30, 40 years of production of these boxes. Certainly. Now, um, you, you flag as well that uh, your own business is, is going to be um, uh, uh, changing to become more data driven. Now, a term that we're hearing more and more of these days is industry 4.0, which is, which is, if I could summarize, it's, it's manufacturing backed up by a lot of data but behind it is, is, is what we mean by that. Well, you're hoping to be the, the, um, the industry standard for welding as, as the sector moves into um, uh, industry 4.0. 4 Talk to us about how that's going to happen through the Evolve 3 program. Yeah, so Evolve 3 is a really exciting project that we have on at the moment. Um, essentially, um, our welding torch technology is very mature. It's being developed. You know, we can lay down a beautiful weld. But what we're seeing in, in advanced manufacturing globally is the need for um, the torch 
world itself to be incorporated in the entire digital record of the manufacturing process. So that's everything from the drawings, um, the actual world, you know, what currents and voltages and speeds you move the torch at at various times, what gas flows you had, all of those sort of years, but also all of the um, post-world um, quality control checks, so uh, ultrasonic um, checking of the world, um, using audio of um, the world actual art. You can listen to the, the art and analyze that and see if there's any faults. Because right. um, if you have like a fit up problem, it shows up in a change in the in the pitch. Now, to an experienced welders use this all the time, um, but AI applied to that, we get to another level of fidelity in terms of understanding it. So our vision is that not only will you monitor the the drawing pack that's come in, so you have all of the um, you know the cutting plans and everything for the for the base metal that went into it into a, a digital record, we will incorporate. Um, all of the uh, work on the, sort of like the, the welding parameters, the speeds we use, the gas flows we use, the currents, the voltages, all of those, you know, dozens of parameters that, that are acceptable. And also take um, in real time the um, non-destructive testing that's done live. And, and we're, we're looking at artificial intelligence and things to look at ultrasonics and and audio tracks and visual tracks, welding cameras and things like that, and bring all of those into a digital record, which is then goes with the piece. And that's the concept of, of Industry 4.0. Um, so Evolve 3 is our project for looking at that. Uh, what's different about us is that we're putting all of that into a single um, welding unit um, and integrating in third party cameras. So we, we never become a camera producer, but we'll have other people's cameras and we'll be able to collect and hold those records. And that's unique in the industry. So yeah, we see that no one's ever done this before you. No one's ever done this before. And industry, the big end of town, you know, the, the, the leaders and the things, so like the defense shipyards, the nuclear, um, uh, you know, processors and the people building nuclear reactors indeed, um, they're screaming for a good solution for this. And there isn't one in right. the market. So it's just before Christmas 2021. If we were having this discussion before Christmas 2022, what, what do you hope to have achieved by then? Oh, by Christmas 2022, I think we will have um, developed the, uh, or be well on the way to having developed the next generation of nuclear um, uh, waste container things. And we'll have made a, a number of announcements on that. We'll have increased our, um, our distribution partners for our, our kit, we'll uh, worked on that quite extensively. Um, we'll be having a number of announcements of that going forward, like throughout the whole of next year. Um, we'll co have continued our 30% um, plus uh, quarter on quarter compound growth in revenue. Um, and uh, we'll be announcing the release of Evolve 3. Well, it's going to be a, a, a busy year. No, no question about that. Adrian Smith, well done to you and your colleagues at KTIG for everything you've achieved to date. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm certain if I if I nosed around amongst the uh, customers, they'd all be very satisfied with your progress. So uh, keep up the good work, good work. And investors, uh, this is a company you may not have heard of, but worth paying attention to. Thank you very much, Jeff.